a bus crashed into an American Airlines jet, injuring five people. Two other airlines ran into light poles. One jet almost landed on top of another airplane, and a major airline had to abort their takeoff when another plane pulled on the runway in front of them. So we're gonna take a look at all of these incidents and all of the facts in this video for what you really need to know. Airlines in the US carried over 900 million passengers in 2019. Now that number plummeted during the pandemic, but it's rapidly recovering. As air travel demand continues to increase, airports are going to stay busy for the foreseeable future. And although the number of aviation mishaps seems to be on the rise, what does the data really say? According to the NTSB, if you look at the safety record for Part 121 carriers in the United States, which is basically the commercial airlines, you can see that fatalities are essentially non-existent. There was one fatality in 2019 when Pen Air Flight 3296 was landing in Alaska and couldn't stop and went off the runway where one of the propellers hit a post, causing the propeller to shatter, and part of it entered the fuselage, fatally injuring one of the passengers. If you don't remember that one, then you probably remember the incident in 2018 with Southwest Flight 1380. Now the reason this one is so memorable is because this is the flight where they had a contained engine failure. The engine cowl was broken and fragments caused the explosive depressurization of the aircraft after damaging a cabin window. Unfortunately, one passenger was partially ejected from the aircraft and later died. Other than those two fatalities, it's been 14 years since a major aviation disaster in the United States that resulted in significant loss of life. Now that incident took place on February 12, 2009 and involved Colgan Air Flight 3407. They entered a stall and crashed into a house in New York, killing 49 passengers and crew, as well as one person in the house. However, the reason that that aircraft stalled is a separate story for another video. One reason fatalities are down is because in 2013, the FAA increased the requirements for commercial pilots and first officers to 1,500 hours, and pilot rest requirements were also increased. This is why most aviation experts agree that the most dangerous part of flying is your drive to and from the airport. But if that's the case, then why does it seem like ground mishaps at airports across the country are on the rise? A Qatar Airways 777 aircraft hit a light pole in Chicago. The incident occurred as the aircraft was taxiing after landing. Chicago O'Hare is a mega hub with eight runways and over 100 taxiways. Not all of them are wide enough to accommodate wide body 777s and additional taxiway width is also needed at all 90 degree turns. Now, initial reports suggest that the crew was following the ground controller's taxi instructions. However, one of the taxiways was not approved for use for bigger aircraft like their 777, and neither the crew nor the ground controller recognized the mistake. Fortunately, there were no passengers on board. However, Qatar wasn't the only one to hit a light pole on the ground. An American Airlines Boeing 737 taxied into a pole in Dallas, Texas. Now you can see in the video, the aircraft was taxiing out of the ramp area when it struck a lamp post with the left wing. Check out the reaction of the guy working on the ramp at the bottom right of the video. He's just going about his day and all of a sudden he can't believe what just happened. Fortunately, no one was injured, but that wasn't the case when a bus crashed into an American Airlines at LAX. Before we take a look at that, here's what you need to know as a passenger, because a lot of times it can feel like it takes forever from the time you push back from the gate until you take off, or it can be very frustrating when you arrive at your destination 20 minutes early, only to have to wait 30 minutes before the plane can park. There are very strict rules and procedures that pilots must follow when they're taxiing aircraft around on the airport. Now on top of that, each airline implements their own set of standardized procedures and best practices to help ensure the safety of crew and all the passengers on board. Airline pilots brief the expected taxi route along with any potential threats or concerns prior to even starting engines. At most major airports, airline pilots have to get permission from ramp control before they even push back from the gate. Now the ramp control tower is monitoring and directing the flow of aircraft into and out of the parking area. Once they give the pilot clearance to push, the pilot is going to inform the ground crew who is then responsible for ensuring there's no obstacles in the way as they use the tug to push the aircraft away from the gate. After engine start, pilots get permission again from ramp control to begin moving. And before they exit the ramp area, they need to talk to ground control to get their taxi instructions. Pay attention to this exchange between American Airlines and the ground controller at JFK Airport. Grand American with their six heavy single output for taxi. I'm going to take Chevy Kenny Grand and make four left, taxi left, Bravo, let's go to Kilo. The controller tells them what runway they are going to and the route they should take to get there. The
the first officer reads back the instructions to the ground controller, and then the captain will confirm those with the first officer. As the plane heads from the gate to the runway, both pilots are focused on following the taxi directions, finishing up any checklists that are necessary for takeoff, and visually clearing outside. As the plane gets closer to the runway, the pilots switch radios to talk to the tower controller. Now this is very important because there are specific procedures that pilots and controllers follow in order to avoid or prevent a runway incursion. For those not familiar, the FAA defines a runway incursion as the incorrect presence of an aircraft, vehicle, or person on the protected area of the airport surface designated for the landing and takeoff of aircraft. This is a runway incursion. Delta 1943, wind 35018, gust 24, runway 4 left, clear for takeoff. Right, clear for takeoff, runway 4 left, Delta 1943. American Airlines 106 Heavy, American 106 Heavy, hold position. American 106 Heavy, hold position. Delta 1943, cancel takeoff clearance. Delta 1943, cancel takeoff clearance. Oh. Rejecting. The FAA defines three sources of runway incursions. There are operational incidents, which are caused by air traffic control. There are pilot deviations, which is where the pilot is at fault. And there are vehicle pedestrian deviations, which is exactly what it sounds like. According to the FAA, you can see that the number of incursions compared to last year is slightly lower, and the goal is for that trend to continue. Now we've talked about getting out to the runway, but what about landing and getting back to the gate? You can still have a runway incursion when you go to land, and you're about to see how all it takes is one incursion to have a major disaster. A FedEx plane was cleared to land on runway 18 left, and when they were just a few miles from touchdown, the tower cleared a southwest flight to take off on the same runway. The weather was so bad at the time of this incident that the tower couldn't see either airplane, and the two planes couldn't see each other until it was basically too late. Southwest 708 off the tower, runway 18 left, RVI 1200, midpoint 600, rollout 1600, flighting 170, runway 18 left, cliff takeoff, traffic 3 mile final is a heavy 767. Okay, 170, cliff for takeoff, 18 left, copy the traffic, southwest 708. Tower confirm, uh, FedEx 1432, heavy. Clear to land on 18 left. FedEx 1432 heavy, that is a firm, sir. 18 left, you are clear to land. Traffic department, Roger, route to 737. Roger. Southwest Hills are confirmed on the road. Rolling now. Southwest aboard. FedEx is on the go. As FedEx was about to touch down, they saw Southwest on the runway, only about a thousand feet in front of them, and they made a last second decision to go around. Unfortunately, this led to both aircraft flying down the runway at the same time, and they got within 100 feet of each other, according to the NTSB initial reports. Once you're on the ground, the pilots continue to stay focused on safety and compliance with rules and procedures to get the plane back to the gate. Eventually, as the plane pulls onto the ramp and is about to park, this can sometimes be the most frustrating part for the passengers. You're looking out your window and you're watching the gates go by and you glance at your watch to realize you're 20 minutes early. But then the plane comes to a stop and the pilot says to remain in your seats because they're just waiting on some personnel to park the plane. This brings us to the incident where a bus crashed into a plane at LAX. There are always three people needed to push or park an aircraft. You've got a wing walker on each wing and then a tug driver for the pushback or a marshaller for parking. If you look outside your window, you might notice a wing walker standing off the edge of the wing somewhere holding a lighted wand in the air signaling that the wing is clear. Depending on the airport, wing walkers might also be responsible for stopping any vehicle traffic from running into the plane. In the situation in LAX, an American Airlines Airbus 321 was being towed from the gate to a parking area when it collided with a bus. Fortunately, no passengers were on board the plane, but the tug driver, the bus driver, two passengers on the bus, and a maintenance worker on the plane were injured. I can't speculate on what led to this accident or who was at fault, but what I do know is that air travel continues to be very safe, and although media headlines highlight some of these events, you're still much more at risk of being injured driving to and from the airport than you are flying on a plane. If you want to see more details about the runway incursion at JFK or the one at Austin, check out these videos on my channel, and I'll see you next time on Pilot Debrief.